Podcast. You're listening to the Big Dave and Clo Show. I'm pretty sure we're having sex. Oh, I think so. Tear that thing up. Right there, fisted. I don't want nothing bigger. At first, I just started blowing it. No, she's got to hold that in the mouth. Last night, this guy pinned me down and he raped me. I don't understand. I can't do anything with people shoving in my face. And now, the big Dave and Crush. You're, you're on, honey. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not in the... <sighs> you are so, like, far behind, it's not funny. I'm not far behind. If you hadn't been late... Then right, turn on the music. There you go. You're in a one. I don't even mood. want. I don't even want to get started. All I know is, I, I, I my text message simply said, and this is where I screwed up. And I quote: "Show will start promptly at seven thirty today." What time is it now? Don't ask. <laughs> Eight o'clock. Well, I mean, I wasn't necessarily on time either, but you know. No, you weren't. I was fifteen minutes early, bitch. And they've come up with some conspiracy theory that the reason that you told me to turn up early and you decided not to come was because I am like your bitch. Brandon and Jimmy both come up with this whole conspiracy theory as to why you've told me to turn up early and you were late. You need to turn her down a little bit. I don't want to hear her voice that loud today. It's just going to annoy the Screw shit out of me all day long. I was here early. I don't even know time. if I can handle an hour of it. You know what, you know what I think? That, I think that um, uh, the conversation that you had, because I got in here just a few seconds before Big Dave, I think that was very interesting. So I think you guys got something accomplished, so there is a good thing about him not being here on time. It, it, it is. We actually could carry the show for 20 minutes without you. Shit. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure we all want to hear that. What? It was a good 20 minutes. Yeah, well... Are you even curious what it was about? I don't even care. I'm sure it was something about me. No, it wasn't oh. actually. Most of it was about Brandon being a big girl and being really old and acting old. Okay. Which is Sounds like great radio. An oxymoron considering he's surrounded by hot young bitches all the time. Welcome to the Big Dave and Chloe show. It is uh, <laughs> we're we're on fun. Hey, listen, uh, yeah, this is the show that is entertainment based uh, Hell, we talk about uh, sex, love, relationships, as well as our current feelings on current events and news. I think it's more about... And also some great uh, interviews from time to time with uh, local and national acts to see what <laughs> they can say about dick jokes. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of it's about the uh, inner workings between you and uh, Melissa being mad at each other all the time. We're not, I, He's a douche. You're a bitch. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> like if you would. If you were good enough, I might let you. Oh hell, never, never, ever. Even if we were the last two people on this earth, and the world yeah, depended on it. I am Big Dave, your host, along with Clo, your your <laughs> host, and of course our sidekick Mel. See, Clo would be a different story. Do, do you still have a problem with having the word sidekick used? As you, for, do you want to go with co-host? No, because I'm a, what am I, a lifestyle consultant? What did you call me on a that what? little... what? The f- um, um, uh, uh, Show member and lifestyle consultant. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, did you not see that little, like, blurb? That's like, uh, that's like a really nice way of saying she's not vanilla, she's a hooker. Well, those pictures make me look like a hooker. <laughs> you do. You do look like a hooker in those pictures. Telling you, you should have a little price under there. It says two hundred an hour or something like that. No, I'd be more than that. Okay, wh- what are you talking about? Do the pictures for from the from the new promo from that the, you made? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. gotcha. They okay. kind of make me look like a hooker. So where where can we see this promo? Is it on is it on the barlive dot com or is it on the Facebook for barlive dot com? It was there for like one day and then it disappeared. I don't know. So we were talking uh, last week about you and your anal sex thing. I don't do anal. So Clo Clo <laughs> sent me a great link, and I want to I want to start off because I want to ask your uh, your opinion on this. I, I, it has been found that it is something that you need to uh, begin to do. Hell no. Just so you know. No. Nope. Exit only, bitches. No, it's medical. <laughs> no. It's medical. So here we go. Look, uh, a girl's guide to anal sex by Doctor Hilda Hutchinson, right? Mm-hmm. Get the goods on joining the backdoor Betty Club. Yes. Really? Mm. 
<laughs> Dr. Hilda Hutcherson loves sex toys. Sounds a lot like you. Believes the world is much too pornographic and thinks more women should give anal sex a try. It hurts. In other words, she ge- she's the gynecologist that every guy wants his girlfriend to meet. Women who don't, know, don't enjoy anal sex, she says, are probably doing it wrong. It hurts. <coughs> yeah, it's because you're doing it wrong. No. Intrigued, I scheduled an 8 a.m. consultation with the doctor to get goods on and joining the backdoor Betty Club. I am pretty sure that the butt wasn't made to be penetrated. Is anal sex bad for you? You're not going to hurt yourself if you follow these rules. Are you ready to learn? I have no choice, apparently. Well, you know, that's good. Here we go. There are some official anal sex rules. And first, uh, you, you've got to want it, okay? Yeah, you, that puts me out. Well, do you like your, do you like the G-spot? You said you did. You said you were the really good on the G-spot. The G-spot is nowhere near that. Honey. Oh, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> like, See, th- this just goes to show you that maybe you are vanilla and you just don't know no, no. some things about sex. The man's G-spot is there, not ours. Did, yes, it is. Right. But how come, how come girls can have an orgasm, th- I mean, through, through anal sex? It's possible. It's ha- it happens. You could have to ask someone that gets, has had an orgasm through anal sex because I've never done it. <laughs> never had an orgasm going that way. Never will. It hurts. Won't go there ever. Well, well I think to, it, we'll have to try it out. Yeah, but well, I just think it's <laughs> it's one of those things to where I think Dave has has hit on it is is that you're doing it wrong. Yeah. No, I d- so I've done it look, once. It maybe hurts. you just need a smaller one. I just let me do the work, and we'll see what happens. You will never. Here it is. Uh, you've got to rub it all over the penis. Oh, I'm, t- I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. you got to use lots of lubricant. That's the biggest part. And we can get the lubricant from AdamandEve.com. And yeah. they actually have yeah, a relaxer. True. Like there was a spray on their, their thing on that's, their website today, which was a, a special. There's a, a penis spray? No, an, an anal sex relaxer because of this whole Fifty Shades of Grey crap. I guess it kind of like numbs out the anal. I guess <laughs> anus. Anus. <laughs> Whatever. See, you're, 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 you're almost there. Nope. Anyway, you've got to take it slowly. First, you need a lot, and I mean a lot of lubricant. Uh, how much is exactly a lot? A, a lot. Okay. And you got to rub it all over the thing, you know, the junk. And then uh, you use your, your fingers and uh, put the uh, stuff around the thing, <laughs> around the anal thing, and then you slide up the thing. All right, you follow well, me no, so no, far? The, yeah, well, not only fingers. I mean, there's plenty of toys that, that can, you could use. You know what I mean? There's, True. there's there's the little triangular shape thing, which works really well. And uh, that just to, to I, get to I've get never used tried to the triangle. That thing kind of scares me a little. It looks like a you know like one of those cones you see on the side of the road. It just says caution. To but me. it's but it's not that but it's not that big though. It's just a little small triangular. <laughs> I mean, have you had it before? I mean, no, no, no. I mean, I've have seen it before, but you've never tried it on yourself. No, would not you like? Yet. Not yet. No, not yet. I mean, I've often thought about what would it, what would it be like to like you know have one of those things shoved up there, and I'm a little you know I feel kind of bad about it for goes, a girl who would do that, but that just goes back to the whole bicurious thing last week, Dave. So now you're curious about having something shoved up your ass. Do you just look at traffic pylons and go, I hmm? I don't know. Oh. I don't know how to answer this because I'm going to get myself in trouble either way. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, an, I'm like a cat. I'm naturally curious, but I'm not, I'm not curious to the point where I actually want to do it. I just, I, I, I am, I'm imagining to myself how a woman does that. That's, I guess that's the curiosity that I mean. Hold that thought. Chloe, have you ever been curious about having something shoved up your ass? Not that curious to where I am. Okay, see, that's what I, he said. Not that, same here. I've never been that curious either. Yeah, but no, see, he said it immediately. No, oh, yeah. oh, no, sorry. you Pro- prostate it. exam. So that's about the only thing. Well, see, he's but he wasn't curious but about the prostate. That's not sexual. Exam. The prostate exam is like health thing. That's well, do not... you ever have thoughts about the prostate exam? Is it uh, you know what? Actually, you know that's a pretty horrid experience. So it's yes. a necessary evil. And you come to think about it, I'm trying to uh, uh, not really think of that. Yeah, see, <laughs> not, neither am I. It's not really something I you know think about. You know, when I was a kid, I had uh, one of those. Uh, things where they had to go up there with a camera. What do they call those things? Uh, a colonoscopy. Yes. Yeah. So it, when you were a kid, that had to be the, the, the size of a, oh a of a sewer pipe then. It was, yeah. That I mean, it was a good sense. thing. It was a good thing that I was out. I mean, they put me to sleep before they did it. But anyway, where were we at? Okay, yeah, back to uh, what I was saying. One of, my, uh, one of my friends said that Astroglide, and I'm talking about myself, this is uh, on here. It out. 
the the chick says one of my friends says astroglide is not good for anal sex so uh, a lot of people this is the reason why uh, glycerin based lubes like astroglide don't last long enough they need a silicone based lubricant uh, it's going to be a lot better for this type of uh, thing by the way this is a adult oriented show in case i didn't say that at the beginning um and we have a disclaimer this, 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 at the beginning. Right. Okay. That's right. This it's important for people to know that our show is is to help people with their sex lives, help people with their relationships, and uh, help people with lightening up about the whole subject. I mean, sex is natural. Sex is good. Sex is best when it's one on one. And if they haven't figured it out by when now, when it's one on one, or you know, four on three. <laughs> Are we a George Michael song now? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Also, anal sex is say. Uh, here's another question that it's uh, asked a lot. Anal sex is probably a messy endeavor, anyway, right? The answer is no. I wouldn't say so, but everybody <laughs> thinks you're going to have, uh, you know, crap all over the place. No, no pun intended. Well, it just depends on the control of the chick. Really? Yeah. Just I mean, I've heard... I obviously haven't done this enough. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's. I have, I've had some, some friends of mine that tried it for the first time, and, and uh, yeah, she just let go. Oh, no, you're kidding me, dude. Really? No. Yeah, exactly. And wow. it's never happened to me, but it's uh, happened This is a really friends. sensitive subject today, isn't it? See, and... and well, for this lady next to us, I mean, and, for and Mel, the, it is. And the whole time, you know, last week, uh, you know, uh, Pugs was saying we couldn't handle tough subjects. Well, well here's a really important <laughs> subject. These, these are the kind of topics that we need to sit around the table and talk about. We have a lot of knowledge about anal sex, right, Chloe? You have a lot of knowledge about anal sex? Absolutely, absolutely not, but <laughs> I, I'm trying to learn. So, you know what? We, we, did, we haven't asked Mel the obvious question. How, how, besides you're saying it hurts, what's the reason you, you, you don't like it? Because did someone just try to like just go to town right away and no. didn't, didn't do any prep or anything? Or? No, I have tried it a couple of times, but it just does not. It hurts and it gives me no enjoyment whatsoever. So, it's just one of those things I'm just not... I'm not into. I just don't like it. So you're a bit like, how how long? Did, okay, first of all, did uh, when you guys started, did you not take your time? Yeah, no. I, I mean, the the very first time, it was like, yeah, no, that that hurts. And then the second time, it was like one of them that hurts like, worse. Really rough kind of sex thing so I was like okay let's just like try it again because I thought well maybe I've just kind of ruined myself from the first time and now uh, it still hurt and it, I mean there was lots of lube witness natural and otherwise you say witnesses so, yeah, wetness oh I thought you said witnesses <laughs> so it was <laughs> it was just the no, crowd was not pleased it was it's just not I'm, I'm just it's not for me uh, so, you know well, like third time's a charm nope Nope. Two strikes, you're done. Um, All right, nope. what, else, what else do we have, Dave, to try to convince her? Oh, hold on a second. I was actually looking at something else here because I don't know if I can handle this conversation much longer. <laughs> I mean, there's so it's, many things here, too. It says uh, women can, in fact, have orgasms from anal sex, just so you know. See? I'm sure um, they can, but this woman can't. Here's a cool thing, though. Did you know women can actually have orgasms psychologically? Did not know that. They, they don't even have to have any kind of penetration. They can just be sitting there and go, hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. What's kind of like a Harry Met Sally kind of moment? No, no they're lying. See, what, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you're just not the right person to ask. No, see, like, when I get off, I get <laughs> off. Like, there is no, I mean, uh, yeah. but there, you, I'm not, I mean, I'm not sitting at work and, like, just go, oh, yeah, okay. Like, moving my chair a different way and, like, but you have to have some sort of stimulation. You can't just think, oh, I'm going to have you, an orgasm. When you were doing you this, uh, when you've had it before, we're, what position were you in? It had to what? Well, what, what position were you in? This is really important about whether or not you're going to enjoy the uh, um, butt thing. <laughs> <laughs> clinical, clinical. The, the, the normal position, I guess? What's like, the normal position for the butt thing? <laughs> Well, there was the first time was like lent over the bed, and then the second time was on all fours. So either okay. which way, it's See, not. See, it's actually the, you're supposed as a as a starter kit, you're supposed to be doing the like the spooning position, you know? Oh hell no! Like kind of like you know, uh, no, laying on your side. Nope. Come here. You know, nope. Just, just come here a second. I'll show you. You like your clothes back? Because I just about dropped that bomb. No, ever, never, ever. I'll be gentle. <laughs> I won't when I punch you. Look, you ain't got to worry about it. There's not a whole lot there to, you know. 
did, no. It was four inches. <sighs> See, she's thinking on, about you, it now. Yeah, you can handle that she much. Can handle no, there's, is, there is no thinking about it. Just I'm think like about it like I'm your doctor and I'm just giving you an exam. I'm trying to stop myself from throwing up in my mouth. Put my little thumb up there. Also, too, you just may have to do, what, what was the thing last week you had to lift up your belly? Yeah. Where, 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 the, do we have a name for that? The flap. The flap. The flap, yeah. That's right. Just get your get your flap and get it on. <laughs> Put you in the spooning position? No. Never. <laughs> Put the little flap. That wouldn't look pathetic at all, would it? <laughs> <laughs> but we kind of just figured lift out it up when he lays uh, there. Oh, there we go. Put it on top. <sighs> do, you know you can, do you know there's actually a story about a chick who got her light bulb stuck up there? <laughs> now, I'm not curious about that, though. You hear about these people who, who put these things up there, and you wonder how in the hell that possibly happened. Like the girl last week with the jalapeno acreage sausage. Man, that had to hurt. I mean, it's, that's probably one of those things where it felt good at the moment, and then afterwards it's kind of like... It burns. It's a bad idea. Oh, kind of like burns. eating ponchos. Well, that, and like, remember, when you, I mean, every guy I think has done this. It's like when you were younger, in uh, junior high school, you, you put uh, cologne... On, on, your, your, on your private parts? Not a wise idea. That, yeah, that is, no, or uh, what is the is. what is the foot powder? I don't think oh, I've ever done. I don't think I've ever done like talcum powder. You're talking no, about? No, no. It's like that uh, that odor eater. No, like, that that foot Tycodin? powder. Gold bond. gold bond. Yeah, the gold bond foot powder. Mm-hmm. Don't ever put that down there. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Why don't you want to put gold? Because because gold bond smells like you know, like, smells like Ben K. Doesn't it? It smells all medical and just kind of just. Well, I figured, you know. Do you like spray your junk to make it smell better or something or what? I don't know. There's a there's certain things. I guess there's like a, a man penis cologne, right? Yeah, you, but it's, it's just Women called. Women got it. It's called soap. <laughs> <laughs> Axe or, you know what I mean, dial or something. Dove even. You know, I like to put a little bit of uh, suave deodorant up under the flap a little bit there. Just spray or, or, or roll on? No, just roll on. Because it, but the chafing. See, it would sweat, and then he'd chafe. Oh, oh, oh well, I guess in a Dave situation. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not really the problem. Why? Why do you put... Why else would you put antiperspirant deodorant in between your flap? Oh, man. Yeah, or, does, or does it act also as a lubricant to where you don't get chafed down there? Why are we talking about Dave's flaps and chafe and, like... I was waiting for somebody to say something. Can we, like, move on to another subject? Man pulls gun on bong-breaking girlfriend uh, in the top <laughs> news. A Gainesville man was arrested Monday night be on, on accusations. He pulled a gun on his girlfriend after a violent argument in which she broke his bong. For man. some, You know what? It's, yeah, that's really kind of... He must have not been stoned yet because usually when you get stoned, you don't, you don't, you don't have a, you know, a, a mean bone in your body. He must have been, like, drinking before... Before beforehand, so how, how many stories have you heard about people smoking pot and you know beating their wife? Not many. If if it's just smoking, you know, if you're drinking and then you smoke, uh, you know, still the chances are down. You mean, but that that could happen. But I I don't think I've ever heard a story of someone smoking a bowl and beating the hell out of somebody. I don't think he got to smoke the bowl. I think you're correct. That's I think sweet. he went to go smoke the bowl and the bitch dropped it. And it, yeah, that's worth the beating. <laughs> yeah, I guess because you know, What did you uh, call her again? A lifestyle <laughs> Lifestyle consultant Yeah, there you go And that's her advice <laughs> She should have got her ass beat <laughs> Well, yeah, because you know A lot of times when people go to smoke They're in a bad mood You know what I mean? So it's like, hey, give me my bong it's Look fun. at this the moment I'm looking forward to and I guess the chick broke it, and yeah, so she gets her ass beat. So yeah. it takes it out on her. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of flaps and uh, also bongs, we've got uh, Pauline Potter here at 720, 28 pounds. She agreed to take the Guinness Book of World Records title as the world's heaviest living woman because she thought it would shame her into losing a major chunk of weight. It didn't work. And shoving 10,000 calories a day into her eaten hole only made her fatter and fatter. I think my eyeballs gained about one pound each just uh, just from reading that. That was almost a year ago, and when uh, Pauline Potter thought she was going to eat her way to a permanent date with the quadruple-wide coffin, a savior in the form of her ex-husband's dick came what? calling. Yeah, continuing. Pauline's ex-husband, Alex, had seen her picture in the paper, and seeing her again after three years made him want to wade in her fupa layers of ecstasy. 
<laughs> Alex paid a visit to his ex-wife, and as soon as she saw him, the gallons of panty puddling came gushing out. No, I'm not sure it's actually panty puddling, and you can buy it at your local Kroger. Uh, Pauline tells closer friend that uh, they have been having sex on a regular basis, and she has lost a buttload of weight. Sexing her way to uh, a a fitter Polly. Yes. Isn't Isn't that sexy? Paint that picture. 728 pounds of love. Going at it every single day with her ex-husband of 150 pounds. That's like the epitome of a dead root. Like, you just lay there. What the hell does that mean? Okay. You, uh, a root is like a screw, like when you screw someone, the, in Australian terms. But... Oh, great. No wonder we're talking about Australian But she's just... Terms. She would just lie there. Like... It would be kind of like you and Taryn with the whole baby seal thing, except ten times worse. It's just... I, I, that's so gross. It's not funny. I don't want to imagine well, maybe, fat people having sex. Maybe he, fat, maybe, he gets, maybe he gets slap happy. You know what I mean? Like ride the wave in? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, just like Ed. Just like the old joke. It, it just... Oh, that's so gross. Why are you, like, pulling up these disgusting stories? Next one. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe was drunk again. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured I would go with some of his drunk stories. Or something. Chloe actually pulls some really good stories when he's like... So another question about the uh, anal sex is, is you recommend easing your way Jesus. in over a period of six days? Uh, is there a Cliff Notes version? Uh, no, you actually don't start with the actual penis. Uh, just the tip? For, for starters, I guess you kind of start with... Like, maybe you got to start with other things. You got to work your way up, stimulating the outside with the uh, finger, and then uh, the tongue, and then slowly use your what? finger to enter the thing. And you see, no tongue is coming anywhere near mine. It, like no, it's just like my tongue is never going anywhere near anybody else's. Doesn't have to be your tongue. Like no, no. You, yeah, yeah, I'm not too crazy about the tongue either way. You know what I mean? Do. I may start lick, with, start with, the start, balls. start with a pinky finger or something, but. Licking the balls, licking <laughs> like the in between, like that little bit underneath the balls. What did those people call that? There was a tossing the. Tossing the salad? Ugh. Yeah, no. Okay, I'm all for licking, sucking the balls, like that little <laughs> flap underneath. Not a problem. <laughs> I will do that until the cows come home. However, there is no venturing anywhere past the taint. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Sorry, just me. Oh. Are God, you sure about that, though? I mean, positive. What if it smelled like axe? Yeah, you no. know? It had that really nice. I know what comes to? out of that. I'm not. I'm um, no. Mm-mm. What if it had some of that uh, Australian like nope. uh, stuff on there? Like what's it called? Peyote. Vegemite. Vegemite. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Nope. I love me some Vegemite, but that's what it looks like comes out of that. Like no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. I yeah, had this. So much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing? Are you just clicking back and forth, deciding? Yeah, get you off. Know, <laughs> just going back and forth. Whether I want to go the anal thing or. Here's one. Did you guys hear about this guy in Portland, Oregon? Stripped nude to Portland's airport security protest. Uh, what he saw as invasive measures. What? Did you guys hear about this guy? Come the guy with the hooch long and had to prove to the airport that the airport TSA that it wasn't uh, wasn't that. Come with that one. Yeah, I believe so. Hold on a second, we're ready to. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. Portland's airport security process. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, blah. Oh God, why does it always start with a big word? It just starts me out. Mul Mulnamaha County Court. Who the hell names their damn county? Mul Multoma. <laughs> I'm just so curious. Why do we do show prep when he's like screws it up every single week? I, I'm just, I'm just, just wondering where he's gonna go. I'm just like, <laughs> what's the point? He's late. He doesn't have his shows <laughs> in order. He doesn't know what he's talking about halfway through the show, the story. He flips back and forth from anal to like complete <laughs> crap. Like, this show is the big Dave and Chloe show. And why is it I'm more prepared than you are? We needed somebody who knew what they were doing. Any other questions? Yeah, that's, that's Shut the hell it. up now. Do you feel better? 
to, you know, to do something for you? Well, I mean... Will you let me stick it in there now? <laughs> That's what I thought. Not gonna finish my story! You didn't even start it! You couldn't read the first sentence, dumbass! because your aborigine, non-vanilla, lesbian mouth is bleh bleh carpet munch all over the place in this room today. At least I can read, bitch. Mom, Montal, Namahama, Hama, Hama. County Circuit Courts Judge David Rees rules Wednesday that uh, John Burnin's. Oh, screw it. Bottom line. <laughs> he went in there and uh, he was basically going through the. Uh, there it is. On April 17th, Brennan arrived at the airport intending to take a business trip to San Jose, California. He worked with uh, groups in Silicon Valley and flies out to Portland, blah, blah, blah. When he reached the gate, he, he, declined, he was declined to go through the uh, airport body scanners, instead choosing the alternative metal detector and body pat-down. After the pat-down, Transportation Security Administration Officer Stephen Van Gordon detected nitrates. Okay. Oh, okay, this is, okay, this is different than what I heard. Okay. Yeah, All right. he detected nitrates on the gloves that he used to check Brennan. Now, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is this is what they found when it came to the Oklahoma City bombing. You remember what I'm saying? Oh, the yeah, nitrates? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And that's what he said. He said, for me, time slowed down. I thought about the nitrates, and I thought about the Oklahoma City bombing. And Brennan said before they even had a chance to, you know, tackle him to the ground, he began to take off his clothes. He was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so he was right there in the airport and said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not that way. He just decided to rip off all of his clothes, just got completely butt naked and said, search anywhere you want, right there in front of all the airport. Well, you know, that's one way of doing it. You know, going, hey, okay, cool. Just yeah. All your clothes? Hey, you, you, yeah. Go ahead. I, I got nothing to hide. Well, he ended up getting arrested for indecent, uh, for indecent exposure because he took off all of his clothes there at the airport. Right well, there. Like, well, uh, isn't that pretty much, you know, like it just, I, I don't know, TSA may have not told him to do that, but that way he's proven that he's cool, right? Yeah, I think it is. But and so I think it's cool that, uh, in fact, the guy, the, the the judge, did find him not guilty of it. Said that he was he was uh, practicing his rights of freedom of speech. There's a fatal flaw in this whole thing. Like I've flown internationally and domestic a lot. <laughs> they they don't do the whole like nitrate the, the traces on your clothing or anything like that until you go back to the room. And then they just, like, swab your shit. So, I'm kind of confused as to how they came to the conclusion he had nitrates on him and he just decided to rip his clothes off. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe they have a new machine. Maybe he was huffing some ni- nitrates. Maybe. You know what I mean? I don't know. Or some nitrous or something. He- I don't know. You know, I have been strip searched before coming back from uh, Mexico, Mexico <laughs> once. That was a horrible experience. Horrible, horrible. Well, I had the drug sniffer dog, like, stop and sniff my clothes because apparently marijuana stays in your clothes <laughs> even after you wash them. <laughs> I don't smoke anymore, but on my trip back to home, the dog came and, like, sat next to me and I'd got nothing on me. But apparently, even if you wash your clothes, like, 20, 30 times, the resin will still stay in your clothes. So, there's a tip, don't fly with clothes you smoke in because mm-hmm. you'll get screwed. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's some badass dogs. Yeah. That's some badass weed too. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It sticks on your stuff, you know. Yeah. Dude, dude, this weed is so badass. You can't even wear your clothes to the airport after you smoke it. <laughs> Damn. Give me some of that. Gotta use some of that. <laughs> Here's another question. Is it possible to hurt her if the penis is thrust in too far? Jesus Christ, really? <laughs> yes. So uh, apparently the penis, if the penis is so long, contrary to what men believe, the average penis is five inches or less. And uh, if, you're, uh, if you're taking an extra long toy, then, then yes, it's possible to hurt. So you don't want to use uh, a really long... A tree branch? Yeah. <laughs> Pool stick. Cue, whatever you want to call them. Or in, uh, was it Brandon's case, uh, a uh, golf club? Yeah. Yeah, golf clubs don't, yeah. I would imagine they wouldn't work well. <laughs> Did you notice I almost maybe, said it? Maybe a putter. I don't know what to say. Right. A putter? <sighs> Not a nine iron. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to talk about something today. I'm just trying to avoid. 
Is that trying, what you, is that what you trying, keep, keep clicking to, back and forth? I'm trying to, to keep my I'm trying to keep myself from doing it. You minimize, well, then, maximize, minimize, maximize. Just do it. What's the story about? Well, there was two things that I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, one was one was abortion, and uh, nope. the other one was uh, having a child outside of marriage. Apparently, there's uh, apparently this is uh, two of the hottest topics in America right now, and uh, the country is almost completely divided, half and half, on both those subjects. Okay, so on my way to work every morning, I go down Greenville Avenue. Okay, apparently there's a clinic that's down on Greenville Avenue, and these Bible bashing morons stand outside of the clinic. Every single morning. Oh, why are they got to be Bible bashing morons? Why do they got to be morons just because they, they read the Bible? See, I take offense to that. Not, you know, not that I read the Bible every day, but I take offense to for, for the Christians out there that listen to our show. Bitch, I'm Catholic, okay? Oh, you're, you're Catholic. So that makes so, it, it's, oh, so it's it makes all it all good. good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, that's, I'm that's, Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> Squashed. It's like, you know, it's like I, I'm... It's like using using your, uh, you know. The the only ones that are like so hardcore about it's like being white and say I could I could talk about black people because I got a sister whose <laughs> husband's black. The only people that are like so hardcore like anti-abortion are like religious fanatics. No, it's not true. Okay. You know, you well, there's well, there, there, well, you know, there's idiots in, in every religion, every walk of life. Yeah, they are. So. Anyway, and I wasn't continue. being specific with any kind of religion. All right, well, but I'm just it's saying, just... get your shit straight before you throw it out there. <laughs> anyway, what about these people? Go ahead. They basically stand there and wait for people to drive in and out of the clinic and harass these poor women that go in and out of these clinics. They're I'm poor sorry. women. Yes. I mean, do you mean poor women? As in, oh, it's so sad they got knocked up. Or, oh, it's so sad because they're too poor to afford a good doctor. No, these poor women who have made this decision. It's not to get an knocked easy, up. It's, I am so pro-choice, it's not funny, so don't even go there. No, I will go there. Okay. So you got to be careful because that's the reason why I brought this up. Because, you know, you want to talk about real subject here. You want to talk about something that a lot of people are against. I, right here, we're 50-50. Autom- this is obviously a true thing. It is my choice to do whatever the hell I want with my body. Really? So yeah, you're, you're totally is. for these bitches who yep. go out there and have 15 effing children and then we all got to effing pay for it. No, if they want to go Because and they like to get their little pussy knocked up every once in a while. We got to pay for their little effing kids. If they want to go F them. and Honestly, have... I'm going to say, fuck them. I, I could give two I shits give whether... Shit. I, could I don't want to pay for their little fucking mouth. I don't care if they have the kids. I care about the ones that make the choice to not have the child. It is their choice. Nobody else's and nobody else should shove their shit down their throat just because they... And I'll say it. I've had an abortion. I have, because you want to know why? Wow, At that point that in time, one, not at all. I'll be, me in. I will be more than willing to be honest mm. about it. Okay. Because it was my choice. At that particular point in time, I couldn't afford to have a baby, so I didn't have it. Plus, it was my exes from back in Australia, so there was no way I was going to be strapped to him for 18 years and his abusive shit. So, yes, I did. I went and got rid of it. I called my mum and said, I'm pregnant. Deal with it. My mum went and took me to a clinic. So, let I me took ask care you a it, question. And I don't even think twice Do about it. Do you think it was a mistake? To be pregnant? Hell, uh, hell yes. yes. It was, was it a mistake for me to get an abortion? Hell no. It was my choice. Okay. I'll do what I want. Glow. Uh, you know, what it was, as far as you just jump right in, I'm like, like oh, you guys are going, shit. you guys are going too good at it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, like, I, I am a, a supporter of, of, of women's, of women's choice to do, to do what they want to do. You know what I mean? I used to kind of lean the way of it being only, you know, rape or abortion or whatever, but it's just one of those type of things. If, if you don't want the kid and, and, uh, you're not, and you're going to be you know, crappy your body and not take care of the kid while you're pregnant and you don't care, then why bring it into the world? I kind of agree. These kids that the, the whole pro choice, the pro anti abortion, whatever the hell they are, they're okay for people to like go and have these kids, but who's going to feed them? There are more kids that are starving because their parents can't afford to feed them than what there are that people that go and actually have abortions and do something right. But you know what? The thing is here, and, and I got I to be honest with you, you know, I, 
I, I'm sorry you had to go through the whole abortion thing, but Why? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to paint a pretty picture just because you're in the room with me and you've had one. I'm going to be straightforward because that's what, that's what, that's what the show is. You're going to piss me off. Yeah, I may piss you off, but you, you need to hear, you need to hear what a lot of people what may be thinking. Why do you feel sorry for me because oh, I made a choice? I don't, I don't, I don't saying, give a shit. I'm not saying I feel sorry for you. I'm you just, just saying said. I'm not going to, okay, let me rephrase it. I'm not going to sugarcoat my beliefs on this simply because you're in the room. That's what good reporting good topics and good arguments are all about. People have the balls to say what they really think in front of each other. Bring it. All right, here's the thing. In my opinion, I think that a lot of us are, are afraid. Oh, damn it. Why is it every time I get ready to start something, a song ends, and I have to push something else? I really got to get something fixed on this stupid thing so I don't have to effing push stupid buttons. Now I lost my train of thought. Damn it! Go ahead. What were you saying? Well, let me just put it in perspective. It'll for come you. back to me in just one second. I guarantee it. I had an ex fiance who beat the daylights out of me on a regular basis. I'd left him and he still beat the daylights out of me when he came back to my house. I then found out a couple of weeks later that I was pregnant. So I took care of it. That's that's the fact. I didn't want it, wasn't gonna be stuck with him, wasn't gonna have another kid. Did so you did you did you tell him about it nope. before you went to go, went to go do it? Nope. And so, what do you call it? I don't know how other laws in Australia, can you do that yep. without his consent? Yep. Whatever? It's none of his business. The, the well, I don't know. Like, I, I could have, I swore, swore that I recalled, uh, I mean, I don't see, I'm not, 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 not too clear, but. Okay, like, I remember now. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Mm-hmm. You just hit no, me. no, no. I the, can't even talk. The rant that I was wanting to go on was about this. The bottom line is, once again, the children in this whole equation. <laughs> the unborn the unborn child and the born child are not responsible for the adult's action. It's not a frigging kid when you get rid of it. Oh, that's a really easy way of putting it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really easy to say, get rid of it. Yeah. See, I totally disagree if with that. If they're responsible enough to get rid of it because they know they can't feed it or they can't support it, why give it up for adoption? But there are other people when out there. Like there are other people out there that cannot have children that are willing and able to take care of the child that you were irresponsible in creating. What? So you carry it for nine months, you then give it up, and then eighteen years later they come knocking on your door, going, "Why the hell did you do that?" Sorry. So you got to be honest. You got to say, "Hey, I, I made a bad decision at the time, and I I own up to it." I think that's probably the biggest problems in today's society is the children today growing up aren't taught correctly. And this is the parents' issues, the parents' problems, and the parents' responsibilities. And there aren't enough parents in today's society taking, taking on those responsibilities like they should. But we got a bunch of, bunch of sorry-ass parents living in this country and, and in this world today that don't know the first damn thing about raising a baby because right. because a lot of people in the baby boom weren't raised properly in the first place. So you got one generation moving on to the next thing. It's just getting worse and worse. And now you got a bunch of stupid ass kids running around with their pants to the ground, you know, looking like a fool. <laughs> and and you got you know you got you got kids that are you know breaking into shit and, and shooting people for no reason and uh, you know you just got a bunch of retardation going on to... in, in the generation that's happening with these children because parents aren't sitting down with their kids. I mean, parents aren't beating their damn kids like they should anymore nowadays. <laughs> that kind of supports Melissa's but you know thoughts, what? though. And I don't if mean quite. Gone... I don't mean quite literally. I got to make that clear. I don't mean quite literally beating their kids. But I mean, I'm what? just saying a good spanking for me was a damn good thing. But if life. they had bounced off a plastic bucket, it would be an issue a bounced off a plastic bucket yeah that's where they go when it's done wow <laughs> holy crap there are a lot of people pissed at you right now. they can be pissed at me all they like because you know what if the, the parents weren't responsible enough to raise them why the hell have them in the first place you just proved my point by saying that. That was the, probably the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You're all pro, like, have in the words, kid, have the kid. There, I'm completely, look, get rid of it if you can't be responsible okay. enough to have it. Okay, so how if you am can't I be responsible enough to have it, don't open your legs and allow it to come in. So, bam. All right? If, really? you, if you can't handle, if you can't handle yeah, the Dave's consequences, go, use, a da- a use a damn condom. Uh-huh. If you can't handle the consequences, have some effing birth control. It's effing free right now. For the love of there God. There is birth control. It's talk, called a clinic. Let's talk about responsibility. Let's talk about responsibility for the unborn child here. Let's talk about that responsibility. There is no responsibility for That's my whole point. There is child. no fucking responsibility nowadays. 
there needs to be more responsibility. We're adults. We need to act like adults, and we need to decide when we're going to have that child instead of just opening our legs or sticking our dick out and hoping everything works out all right. It doesn't. There's such thing as that's, fucking sperm that comes out every time your penis pulls out. No shit. That's why the responsible ones go and get an abortion because they know they can't raise a kid. They can't afford to do it. They're not going to re- raise responsible human beings. So guess what? They go and get an abortion and then people like you turn around and have a go at them because they made the right decision. But, but, but Dave's talking about the step before. The step before that. Just they don't get, even get yourself into the situation to where, you have to, where you have to do that. You know what? I'm married. I had an accident and we discussed about not having Christopher. That was... But you know what? I was 30 and it's like, okay, I'm in an actual stable family environment. I still work. I still support my family. I still do everything I need to. But there was that discussion about me not having him. So... I'm married. We did everything the right way for like five years. I didn't get pregnant. One drunk New Year's Eve, and then that was the consequence. It's not helping yourself. But there was at a discussion all. about it. Even in it. marriage, there's irresponsibility. You just proved that. One drunk New Year's Eve where we weren't being responsible. But I'm a, resp- I'm a bloody mother of a 16 year old. I already have a kid. I'm already responsible enough. This is a great subject. So it's like. It's a really, it's a really hot topic, and I'm telling you, you can go either way. That's my whole point, Mel. You have good points, I have good points, and that's the reason why the country is split 50-50. So let's go on to having a child outside of marriage. What is the deal with that? Bring it, because I've got one outside of marriage too. I'm She's let, 16 I'm let years old. Let's open up on this one right now. After a break, we're gonna take like a five, nah, not even a five minute break, just like about a four minute break, because I want to pull a couple of things up. Is there someone calling out. in? Is there someone calling in right now? Oh great, I'm yeah. gonna get abused. Let's go. All right, I'll hold off the break for just a second. Uh, you're on the Big Dave and Chloe Show. Who may I ask calling? Hi there. My name's Red, Red Young, and I wanted to talk about uh, what you were talking about with beating your kids and having them turn out uh, right or wrong. Okay, now, first of all, and she may have been talking over me when I clarified that. Let me make it absolutely clear. I don't mean beating your kids. I'm talking about when I was a little kid. My mom and dad would give me a nice little spanking on the bottom every time I do something wrong because they would, they would make it clear that that was not the right thing to do. My mom and dad never beat well, me, and I would never say that anybody should beat their child because they need to be put in an institution well, I, if they're that I'm not, stupid. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying beat your child, really. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a little discipline to uh, get you. your kids straight. Yep. Uh, I agree. When I was, That's my point. When I, was a kid, when I was a kid and I'd mess up, uh, my daddy would pull the belt on me, and he'd whip me in the back. And my mom would do the same thing. And the, the worst thing, I'll tell you, is even you? worse than the belt yeah. is... Uh, what you call the little race car tracks that, you know, it got for Christmas. And then they, oh, they whacked me out on the back of the butt. And then one time my mom, she uh, she got real mad at me. And she didn't hit me in the butt. She hit me in the back of the leg and said, what the hell did you do that for? She said, because I can. I'm your mom. I can take you out of this world. I brought you in. Hell yes. yes. Hell yeah. freaking Louie. That's what my mom did the exact same thing. And that's, that's you know, that, it's that kind of discipline, Red, that, that, that we're not getting enough of nowadays with children. It seems like everybody's afraid to discipline their child because they're afraid of some, uh, uh, what did you call it earlier, Mel, a Bible thumper or whatever yeah. you call it? It's kind of like abortion. It's nobody else's business. Now, it, now here's the thing. If, if, if his mom, if, if Red's mom would have pulled out, you know, um, a huge two by four and started hitting him over the head with it in the store. That's one thing. But you know, we all know we all come from a generation where we were, you know, we were we were um, reprimanded in a proper way. It's like when my I don't know if your parents ever said this to you, Red, but my my mom and dad would set me down before they gave me a spanking. They would set me down and say, "Son, we're doing this for your own good. We love you, and it hurts us to have to do this, but it needs to be done." You know, and I never believed them until. I became an adult, and then I realized, you know, it's probably a good thing they did that crap. You got a warning before you got a beaten? I never got the warning. I got knocked the hell out and then <laughs> got just woke just... up to them going, you know why I did that? And they explained it to me afterwards, and I'm just still like, okay. Well, I damn. thank you for your call, Red. Yeah, anytime. I appreciate you, and uh, you tell them why in our boys that we love them. You bet, sure. absolutely. <laughs> right out. <laughs> the why in our guys, that's awesome. They but are see, awesome, when yeah. I was in the store and we mo- we me- uh, m- played up, my mum would grab me by the ear and, like, drag me out to the car. 
There is no beating in public. My mum never, ever laid a hand on me in public. But no, when the I got home, my stepfather would, like, lay me out. Yeah. So, wow. I mean, I, I don't know. You're, the beatings you did, that I never, copped... She never got enough of it. Well, the me. beatings that I copped when I was growing up, it, I would never do that to my children. All right, you got like, to shut ever. up now. I have to go to break. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. The Big Dave and Chloe show. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, having children outside of marriage. Yeah, we're going to attack some things that people say we can't attack. We're going to do it right here today. Right on. Obviously, we're, we're, we're pushing a button or two on a few people, so uh, yeah, why the hell not? You feel free to call in 214-736-3569. We'll be right back in four, four minutes. Crunching and folding toilet paper. Finally, there's a better way. Comfort Wipe, the sanitary paper extension arm and holder. The first improvement to toilet paper as we know it since the 1880s. It extends your reach a full 18 inches while it follows the contours of your body and comfortably cleans. It's as easy to use as a shower brush. Just pop on the toilet tissue and when through, just press the release button and the tissue drops right into the toilet. Think about it, toilet paper is really archaic and disgusting. The Comfort Wipe is a modern solution. That's right, never touch another dirty toilet tissue. Being a big guy certainly has its advantages and its disadvantages. This is a great product. It's embarrassing to have someone help you with your personal matters. The Comfort Wipe allows you to maintain your dignity while you maintain your personal hygiene. Comfort Wipe. The sanitary paper extension arm and holder. The first improvement to toilet paper as we know it since the 1880s. It extends your reach a full 18 inches while it follows the contours of your body and comfortably cleans. So if you or someone you love suffers from the loss of range of motion, or if you're someone who just doesn't want to touch dirty toilet paper, don't be embarrassed. Just get a comfort wipe. Order now and we'll send you the comfort wipe for just $19.99. Plus, we'll send you the Get a Grip. Just pay separate shipping and handling. It's the assist handle that installs in seconds. Getting in and out of the tub has never been more comfortable. You get it all. The comfort wipe and the get a grip. The entire $50 value for just $19.99. But you have to call now. Are you tired of taking your dog for a walk and picking up after their mess? Are you tired of using grocery bags or products that are heavy and not useful? It can get very messy when your pet goes in the house or on the sidewalk or even your neighbor's lawn. We have the answer for you. Introducing Poo Trap, an amazing new innovation that eliminates the need of picking up after your dog. Poo Trap is a unique new product that fits any size dog without any hassles and your pets will love it too. It's easy to install on your dog and makes your walking experience fun. Walking your dog just got easier with a Poo Trap. No poops, no whoops. Poo Trap is available in eight sizes and three colors. There are no substitutes. Poo Trap, the magic poop collector. Order yours today. Call 888-POO TRAP. That's 888-766-8727. Call now or visit our website at www.pootrapusa.com. Order yours today. Do you have trouble getting a good night's sleep? Are you constantly tossing and turning, trying to find the perfect position of comfort? If your current pillow makes it difficult for you to relax and sleep easily, you can now rest assured. The Booty Pillow is the product you've been waiting for. It's the perfect asset to a good night's sleep. It's nature's perfect pillow, modeled after nature's perfect shape. My girl is always on the road for business, so I don't get to cuddle with her the way I like to. Thanks to Booty Pillow, I feel like she's still here. My back was always hurting me, and I couldn't do anything because my boyfriend would want to lay on me. Thanks to the Booty Pillow, my back doesn't hurt anymore, and I can go as I please. The Booty Pillow is made to provide maximum comfort wherever you use it. Use it at the office to ease back pain. 
Use it in your bed to sleep. Use it on the couch while watching a movie. You can use it anywhere. Normal pillows of this size and quality can go for $90, $100, or even higher. Order now and get the booty pillow for the low price of just $29.99. Booty pillows, putting a smile on your cheeks. I've got to figure it out, put my theory to the test. All the answers at my fingertips, I can do this in my sleep. Welcome back to the Big Dave and Chloe Show. Big Dave right here with you along with Chloe. Get a little big mail over here. And, of course, Jimmy behind the board, producer of the show. So we got into it. There it is. It's on the table. I don't mind hitting these subjects. You know, you're the only one that really complains every once in a while when we get into these. Cause I think the reason why is because you're high strung. I'm not high strung. You're high strung, and you, you you tend to get a little excited about certain things. Now, now obviously, you've been watching some of our chat room stuff, and people are tending to agree with you. On a lot of the stuff, which is fine, because there's a lot of people out there, and, and and I'm gonna attack the people who don't agree with me right now, because the people who normally agree with me are the same people who allow stupid laws to go into effect because they don't vote. No, so for those people who aren't agreeing with oh me, usually they're vaginas and they can't say what they really think. So anybody who doesn't agree, who does agree with me, they're usually the kind of person who uh, won't say anything because they're timid. Bullshit. Those people who agree people with you that... are the kind of people that are making our laws, and that's the reason why a lot of them are screwed up. No. The people that agree with you are the people that are against Bam. homosexuality, against gay marriage, against basically everything that is that makes up everybody. Guess what? You have the right to do whatever the hell you want to do without anybody questioning it. That's a, isn't that part of what Amer makes America great? Exactly. That's what leads us to uh, having a child outside of marriage. 54% uh, <laughs> think it's unacceptable. 41% think it's wrong. And 13 are indifferent. <laughs> 13% are indifferent. Well, guess so, what? So, therefore, you've got, you've got another, another thing on here that the nation is split on. Is it okay to have a child outside of marriage? Is it okay to have a child? All right. It's, it's, let's, let's think about that responsibly. We have a lot of... Oh, we, my God. All right. Here, let me, give you, let me give you just a quick... Can you bring the music down just to here? Or, or I can do it. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, here, let me give you just a, just a stupid little tiny itty-bitty little example. There was... I, I watch golf. I don't know if there's any people out there who watch golf. I... I personally enjoy watching golf. I wanted golf. to see how you're going to tie this in. It, it relaxes me, <laughs> okay? Yeah. It relaxes me to watch golf. Well, I was watching the, uh, the what happened to the music? Is that me? Did it just fade out? See, once again, beginning of the conversation and the song ends. I have got to get this on a loop. It's really annoying the hell out of me. Seriously. Like, I'm getting ready to, like, continue with your useless babble. Throw it through the damn wall. So, uh, watching golf the other day, and I think it was the, uh, the some open or whatever, and this kid... Right, right at the end, decides that uh, he was going to walk over and pick up a golf ball that uh, one of the golfers that was in the lead had hit over to a certain area. Well, everybody knows 
that's one of the biggest no-nos as a spectator of the game to do. Well, you why, just didn't some, why didn't somebody stop him as soon as he walked onto the green? This is the problem. We're sitting here watching the video of this, right? And you cannot see this little damn kid's parents anywhere in sight. Nowhere in sight. It's not the kid's fault for being the stupid idiot picking up the ball, which, of course, you all know because this little runt who wasn't having his parents around to tell him what the F to do, picked up this ball. Now the rest of us are going to have to pay for it next time we go watch a game of golf because we're going to have to be about 20 feet further away from the actual action now because some stupid little shit picked up a ball because his parents weren't watching him. And you know this is how it goes because every single thing that we have to pay for nowadays is because some stupid shit did it and we have to pay for it because they're stupid. And it all comes back to one thing. This is how it wraps in. Just, 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 Just listen to me. It's just how it all wraps in. I'm curious. Because the parents aren't rearing their children like they're supposed to. How the fuck does that have anything to do with whether they're married or not, dumbass? Let me go there. In a study that's been done, over 70% of children that are raised by a two-parent family are known to have less crime rate oh my than, a, than a child who is born and raised in a single-parent dwelling. Now, this is not my... Coming. I did not come up with this number. I'm going to beat the shit out I of you. I want to know why that is. <laughs> and I'm going to do it on camera so there's evidence <laughs> just like five seconds later of like the blind rage that's going to come over me so I can beat the living shit out of you. Does it really bother you this much? <laughs> why are you mad at me? Because a study came out that showed that. I had a child at 15. Okay? All right. And you obviously believe the bullshit that comes out of your mouth. That's why it bothers me so much. What do I mean? Like, well, I, mean, I don't mean to support Dave, but D- Dave's just reading it, and, and I know you're taking it, taking out on Dave, which is fine. That's cool. I mean, I have no problems with that whatsoever. <laughs> but it is just the the the, uh, the study that says that. I would disagree uh, with not necessarily the study, but the thing outside of the marriage. But you know. That's why I'm asking. How the hell does he tie this back? Like, cause it's gonna be because it's because because, because it the in, study says I tie it. I tie it into this. You know, ch- children outside of marriage means that you're going to have a single parent family, and single parent families are very difficult. It's very difficult for a single parent to raise a child on their own. I'm not saying that it's not done every single day, and that there aren't great single parents. There are fantastic single parents. Just the kids are screwed up. I'm saying that there are your chances, according to studies, have proven that your children are going to have a harder time growing up in a single parent dwelling versus a dual parent dwelling. Now, that's even that's even in the study. It even goes to say that even gay marriage couples who raise a child are better off than a single parent. Do you believe the bullshit that comes out of your mouth sometimes? It's not. My, it didn't come out of my Okay, mouth. Dave, where's your stance on it then? You want to keep going back to, oh, it's the study. It's well, the study. I'm glad you What's asked. your stance then? Here's my stance. My stance is this. I believe there are some great single parents out there. And God bless those single parents out there who have both the courage and the ability to raise their child properly. That's my first, first of all, I want to start with that. Second thing I want to say is this. With that in mind, If it is possible, I believe it is better that you do not have a child out of wedlock. That you have a child with dual parenting involved. That's where I stand on it. I think if you have the choice, which you do, you should not have a child out of wedlock. So, let's just say everything's happy, we have the baby... A year later, he dies. Who dies? The, the other parent. Yes. So are the kid's going to be screwed up and it's going to be like against your way of seeing things because it's they had the kid in wedlock to start off with, but then all of a sudden, dad or mom is gone. Well, now that's a really good argument. I give you that one. Kudos to you. But here's, but here's what I think. But that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, we're just that's, talking about in today's day and age. That's that's a that's a different circumstance altogether that rarely happens. No, but that ties into it as well because what the deal is is like I think the study basically says you have two parents and two loving parents, and if uh, you have that and you have the family unit, then it's better. It doesn't matter if you're married or if you're divorced. I mean, not divorced. If you're married or if you're not, 
you just need you, it's better off for the kids if 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 both of them are there other than other than one. Um. Okay. Uh, so you know I mean? let's just, just let's just take. I'm surprised my, you don't agree with that. No, I don't because let's just take my situation for a start. Did you ever have two parents at one time raising you? No. And, and, and granted, and, and look how you turned out. And, 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 I turned out just fucking <laughs> fine. And let, me, and, and, and let me let me qualify that. Let me qualify that. Just saying, like <laughs> two loving parents in which it's it's a, a great family unit. I mean, you could have one parent that's that's totally useless and, a P, and pos. This is assuming that the family unit is good, solid, healthy. and healthy, and uh, healthy relationship with you know with every with people, society, with our kids, and everything. Okay. Right. Beca- beca- just, beca- that- just because you know, because you have you have two people. You know what I mean. You have two people helping out. A single parents gonna have a hard time. Yeah. Regardless of if they're married or whatever. So I mean, with that in mind, don't you kind of agree with what Chloe has to say? No, because you have okay, my family. How can for you example, not agree with because that? Because you can so shut up and so, you're gonna listen. So for a, a single second. parents better. Yeah. What? It's better to have a parent there than to have two parents there that one is never there. We weren't talking about that. If you were listening to Chloe, Chloe said a healthy relationship, two people, both rearing the child. But you take my family, for example. Which one? No, just the answer. Which one do you think is healthy? They're exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether there's one or there's two. If you have a a good way of rearing your kid. If you've never experienced having a two-parent family raising you, you can't really answer that question honestly because you don't know. We have two different sets going right here. My parents are still married. They've been married for 48 years, going on 50. All right, I've been raised by, by parents and raised in a family home where it was a healthy marriage, and, and they raised four of us children together, a two-parent family. I turned out great, so did the other four children. We have very healthy and very healthy lives, and, and I'll tell you what, I couldn't imagine what it would have been like if my mom would have had to do it on her own or my father would have had to do it on his own. I am very thankful that I've come from a family like that. You, on the other hand, did not. I think, from my perspective, that's unfortunate for my you. My father died. Do- what? What? I what? think it's. I think it's unfortunate for you. I don't mean I that. I don't mean that as an attack. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be nice by saying I think it's unfortunate. If your If your father died, that's a sad thing to me. I still think it's unfortunate that you weren't able to spend all those years with your mother and father together. There would have been a whole different dynamic in your life. I don't think it's unfortunate. I think my mother raised me to the best of her ability and she did a damn good job of it. Whether my no father was there or not, I would have turned out the exact same way. There's no there's no question. As long about as there that. is a loving parent in that family dynamic, it doesn't matter whether it's one, two, male, female, 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 male, male. As long as there is one parent that can stand there and be with that kid at all times, then there it doesn't go. matter. Which leads me back to what? The golf That's right story. Here. The golf well, story. Well, yeah. Well, n- well, not really the golf story, but here's what the deal is. I mean, mommy okay. wasn't around to tell him, don't pick up the golf ball. So what would you rather have, Melissa? Would you rather have just your mom raising you, or would you rather have your mom and your dad raising you together and everything being wonderful? Well, of course I would rather have my dad in my life, but I didn't have that's, that that's... opportunity to have him in my life. I think I'll just pick up this ball. Mom's not watching She's getting banged by some guy over there with a nice little sweater on. <laughs> but that wasn't, and, and the whole topic has gone completely off because the topic was having kids out of wedlock, not if there was two kid, two parents there. She doesn't watch me anyway. I don't have a dad. I'm a bastard. What? <laughs> we did go off a little off subject, so. Excuse me, son. You're going to have to put that ball back down. Why? Mom's not watching. She's too busy. How old was the kid that picked up the golf ball? That's the sad part. The kid was like 14. Old enough to know better. Right. So it's got nothing to do with the parents. Ah. You've gone and smoked a cigarette behind if your that, parents' back. If that, if that, and if they that, taught you that it was bad. If that good mother like you had. Oh, my Like Jesus. you had. I'm going to beat you. Well, let me finish. If, if he would have had a good mother like you had, the kid wouldn't have picked up that bunk. She would have been right there. She would have been right there whooping his ass as soon as he picked it up. Shit. Apologizing to everyone for him. Your mom told you not to do things and you still bloody did it behind her back. Oh, but I paid for it. I paid for it dearly. I'll Don't tell you, you I'll tell you. That kid paid for it because he's all over the freaking internet right now. I'll give you a little story. I'll tell you how I was I'll tell you how I was taught when I was a kid. I did something one time that I'll I'll never forget. It was still a very vivid memory. I'm gonna eat some beef jerky. Really? Have some beef jerky. Here it is. Snap into a slim gym. I go into a store, right, with my mom and dad. And, you know, hey, they have those little, you know, they used to have those those stores, they used to have those candy 
aisles where they have the candy literally like sitting out. Mm-hmm. And you can, like pick one up, a handful, put it in a bag, and bring it to the register. Mm-hmm. Oh, not me. That was free candy to me. So I'd you wait, stole. I would wait until the perfect opportunity. And steal the candy. Yeah. Just when I thought mom wasn't watching. But you had a mommy and a daddy. And How can you steal candy when you have a mommy and a daddy that raised you right? Well, if you listen, I'm going to tell you. Because my mommy and daddy were a good mom and daddy. Really? Because you stole candy. Hold on. Just like the kids stole the golf ball. They would always yeah. see me do it. And this time they caught me. And I had to take the candy out of my hand, with my out of my pocket, with my, my chubby little sausage hands, and, and bring it to the register. And they made me come straight up to the manager of the store and apologize for stealing that candy. That one time you got caught. And they said that they said that anything that the manager wanted me to do, that I would do it to make up for stealing the candy. <laughs> so what happened in the back? They literally made <laughs> I I'm not kidding. It is a, it's a true story. That day the manager the manager actually said to my mom and dad said, No, that's okay. Just don't do it again, son. And my mom and dad my dad said, Oh no. <laughs> no, you don't understand. He's going to do something. It's either a spanking when we get home by both of us or you can have him do something. In other words, you better save his ass. <laughs> <laughs> if you really care that much. Right. If you really care that much. Well, my question so is... So he ended up, I ended up having to go to the back of the store, and I literally had to put uh, 15 boxes on a pallet for him in order to make up for stealing that candy. Nowadays, would you see that kind of thing happen? I don't know what happened with the, with the golf kid. Did, did you know if, if there was any sort of discipline that, that happened with the, the golf kid? Did he have to... Exactly. Did he have to wash balls I or anything? I haven't heard anything. At the golf course? I haven't heard anything. <laughs> the dirty balls. I haven't heard anything. Maybe one of those cases just like that. It's like, you know, he got caught. He he may have been disciplined. But how many times did you steal the candy before you got caught? Obviously a lot. But you had a good mummy and daddy. And you had one of each. (laughs) So you were raised right. You're so full of shit. You haven't let me answer the question. The answer is uh, no. I think I stole it once. That was the last time. Uh Uh-huh. Sure. And a lot of times you? I would get in trouble because of my older brother or my older sister convincing me to do something. Another time I got I got in trouble for what? sticking my hand up a. Uh, you remember back when you could stick your hand up one of those uh, Coke vending machines and actually grab a Coke and like pull it down? Yeah. But you had it. Yeah, my brother he got too old and he couldn't do it anymore himself, so he had me do it one time and I got caught. Well, I brought my Cokes back to the back to the room because we were staying in a hotel. Walked in with like four Cokes in my hand because I had my little fat stubby hand up there and they're grabbing that stuff and mom and dad's like, "Where'd you get all the Coke?" Oh, I just pulled it out of the vending machine. What do you think I got it? But, but you had a mummy and a daddy money? that taught you Nobody. the right way to do things. Yeah. And why do you keep, I uh, never stuck my hand up a vending machine to steal anything. You and a, I only had one ha, parent ha, that ha, raised ha, me, have you, have you, and she raised me right, which was ever, not to steal. It, I'm sure you didn't, right? You no. never, never stole anything Never your whole stolen time. anything in my entire life. You never did anything wrong your nope. whole life? Don't they cut your hand off in Australia if you do that? Or You're not? so full of crap. <laughs> Is it in Australia? You're so full of crap. No. You swear cannot to God. tell me you've never done anything wrong in your whole life. Nobody well, can trust you now. They can, whatever. Chloe, you've done something when wrong. When I was in your growing up. Oh, yeah. I just, 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 when yeah. I was growing up and I was under my mother's roof. No. Because you know why? My father, stepfather, would knock the shit out of me. Like, literally beat the living daylights out of me on a constant basis. So I grew up in fear. That's not a bad... Well, it's a bad thing that you're getting beat. That's for sure. But I think isn't discipline in itself a uh, fear factor anyway for children? The the more you fear, the less you want to do it? Well, yeah, it all depends. I mean, you don't have to take it to an extreme for, to, 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 to take a fact. You know what I mean? But I think that kids, kids these days... Uh, you know, are disciplined. You mean, you, what, what the deal is, you don't necessarily have to beat them. You know what I mean? But I'm not against spanking. Nope. But I just think that... If why is that? Now, I'm, I, I kind of want to hit on that real quick before we end the show. Why is that? Why is it that, that we are so against the natural, beautiful thing of spanking your child out of love? And we're not talking about taking a board to your child, whooping his ass to the point where he's got bruises and welts and, and the kids, you know you know scarred for life i mean that's the that's clinical people like that need to be put in jail people well, like that need to be put away yeah well here's here's but a, i'm talking about you know your mom and dad sitting you down out of love and saying look we're gonna have to discipline you yeah well what, what's happened to the point where we can't do that anymore why do well, we not have that right well here's here's the reason why um well there's a couple of things the kid, kids aren't disciplined enough okay but the people will argue the point saying 
okay, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna hit my kids or whatever. But I think this is what the difference between back then and now is that now you have so much that you can take away from kids in order to discipline them. Yep. All right, you have all the gadgets and everything else. If you take that away and stick to it, stick to it. Don't let them cry and and, and have it. That is worth trying first before you start to spank them. Because back in the day, what do we have? We had Hot Wheels. We had a TV. You know, we didn't have as much. These days, there's so much crap that you could take away and go, okay, what what does this kid, you know, most mostly want? And you have a million things you could take away from him, if not everything. Try that first, and then if it doesn't work, then you, then you can try whatever kind of, you know, spanking you want, as long as it's not, you know, obviously bad. I posted a video last night on my Facebook of my nearly two-year-old son throwing his like temper tantrums and all I can do is laugh at him because <laughs> it's funny to me and I swear to God in like he knew you don't at think one that's point, gonna scar him for life what that I posted a video of him chucking a temper tantrum no that you just sit there and laugh at him <laughs> when he's like trying to get your attention no but see here's the thing he threw a picture like a photo frame on the ground and you can hear me go <gasps> And he picks it up and goes, oh, shit, <laughs> and puts it on the ottoman and walks off. And, and you think that's funny? Yep. Because five your seconds kid later. Where did he learn that from? I've, I've got no idea. We have a mummy and a daddy in my house, and I have no idea. I must be not raising him right. Obviously. I'd get shoes thrown at me if I said the word shit when I was a child. <laughs> I mean, oh, he doesn't do it often. Like, what? I mean, he's well, does, two what, years what, old. What, does he go around with his pants hanging to the ground, too? Or what? What? No. He gets disciplined. I don't think you're raising your child right. <laughs> <laughs> I have you to agree. don't think that she's raising your child right. I think you need to bring him over to my house. How many kids do you have, Dave? No, no. <sighs> and you're the authority on raising children. No, I've chosen not to have a child. Thank I've chosen. Jesus. I've chosen not to screw up a kid. That's that's a great way of looking at things. Yeah, it is a great way. Look at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Can that's you a great imagine thing. the hell a child would go through living in my life? Yeah, poor yeah, for yeah, 18 yeah. years. Yeah, I don't think she was being facetious. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad some people agree with me on this. There's a reason why I don't have children, and that's the reason because I don't want to screw them up. Don't get me wrong; they'd probably turn out to be really cool kids, and and they would probably be totally different from anybody else in the in the in their class. But I'm telling you, they would be so different that I don't think many people would get them. Spe- but I would raise them right. Special's not a good word. I would, <laughs> ra- I would, I would absolutely raise them correct, though. Mm-hmm. What? Just teach them to steal candy, and if they ca- get caught, they've got to stuck 15 pallets out the back. <laughs> Either that or get on their knees. <laughs> Is that like Lego, my Kegel? How does that work? Well, she what? should squeeze the muscles when she breathes. <laughs> And relax when she breathes out. He should slowly push in the penis as she relaxes. Have we gone back to anal? That way you're working together. So what you're saying is anal sex takes teamwork. Yes, it does. He shouldn't just push his way in. Men have to realize that if they make it painful, they're never getting in there again. Well, the good thing is... And with that being said, the Big Dave and Chloe Show. I want to thank you for listening. Be sure to check us out anytime if you miss the show. You can always check us out on YouTube, uh, thebarlive.com, uh, replays as well. Uh, you can also email us at any time, the Big Dave and Close Show. Actually, it's called Big Dave and Close Show at yahoo.com. And Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Simply search out the Big Dave and Close Show. Special thanks to our sponsor, adamandeve.com. we got a brand new toy coming your way. We're going to be giving away next week, so be sure to be here for that. We are the show that keeps on giving. <laughs> How does a guy get a girl to let him in the back door when open sesame doesn't work? Maybe we'll tell you more about that next week. Good night, folks.